Hello everyone and welcome to zigwheels.com. We are on the outskirts of Jim Corbett National Park to ride UM's two new motorcycles. First up is the Renegade Commando Classic and second is the Renegade Commando Mojave. So we had seen the Renegade Classic at last year's Auto Expo. The Mojave is a surprise addition. So what does these two cruiser bikes have an offer? Let's find out. Before proceeding further, let's talk about the design first as it is among the highlights of the new cruisers. The Renegade Classic with its retro lines and dual tone paint finish did manage to grab a lot of eyeballs wherever we went. The basic design of the new motorcycle is similar to the Renegade Commando but gets new elements like large windscreen, saddlebag and gets chrome elements on the headlamp, exhaust muffler and the tank mounted instrument console. Another visual highlight is the dual tone chunky mudguard with the classic branding on it. The old school styling and large dimensions of the Renegade Classic will make the bike appeal to cruiser loyalists. The Renegade Mojave on the other hand is basically the Renegade Commando draped in a sand like paint job which is similar to the one found on the Royal Enfield Classic leather stock. It also gets tank mounted zipper bag similar to the Classic which can hold your smartphone or some loose chain and the saddle bag gets olive green finish. While the Classic gets chrome elements, the Mojave goes for an all black treatment and it makes the bike look aggressive. Both the bikes feature tank mounted semi digital console with an unlocked speedometer and digital display for odometer, rear position indicator and fuel gauge. The digital display though could have been a bit larger as it isn't easy to read on the go. It also gets USB port mounted on the console which is helpful to charge your phone while riding. While the paint quality was impressive, the same couldn't be said for the plastic side panels and the switch gear given the price at which the bike retains. Powering the bike is the same 280cc motor as seen on the older bikes but it now features fuel injection to adhere to BS4 emission norms. Power and torque figures are also similar. Ideally, fuel injection should result in better throttle response but that wasn't the case with our Julia bike as the motor faced fueling issues and stalled on many occasions. Later I switched bike and luckily that didn't face any issue but UM has to really improve its quality and be more consistent. The motor feels peppy and it moves swiftly to 80 km per hour. Post which there is a drop in performance. The bikes manage to cruise at speeds around 100 to 110 km per hour with a hint of vibe from the handlebars for company. But overtaking takes effort as you have to shift down and rev the motor to extract the power and at this point you wish there was a bit more torque on offer. 6 speed gearbox did perform well but finding neutral can be a task and I would have preferred a wider shift lever. Refinement level of the motor is decent but at higher RPMs, severe vibration can be felt through the handlebar and saddle. We must add that the exhaust note is throaty and likeable. When typical cruiser fashion, the seat height is very low as you can see it's very comfortable. The foot pegs are front set while the handlebars are curled back towards the rider. So as you can see the riding posture is very comfortable and the commando delivers on the comfort factor. Saddle space is generous and as you can see even for a hefty guy like me there's a lot of space on the bike. Another interesting bit is that the bike weighs 179 kg and despite the weight it's very easy to maneuver the bike. The chassis and even the tyre size are shared with the existing UM range and we know it is a capable setup. Since we are riding on arrow straight road, we really couldn't test the bike's handling prowess. Taking U-turn is an easy affair as the turning radius is tight. Suspension duties are handled by telescopic front fork and twin hydraulic shock absorbers at the back. The bike rode over most of the broken roads and undulations without any effort but at high speeds the rear did crash a bit. The rear suspension should have been set up a bit softer for better ride quality. Talking about braking, the front disc brake offered average bite but there was no feedback through the lever and it felt almost dead. At this price point, rear disc brake should have been provided as standard. So it's time for voice. And in terms of design, UM has nailed it. The Renegade Classic with its old school lines will appeal to the traditional cruiser buyers while the Mojave has a bit of modernness that should appeal to the youngsters. The 280cc motor offers good acceleration and is also very refined. Having said that, it really doesn't have much competition when one compares it to the Royal Enfield, which isn't much of a benchmark. 
we faced fueling issues on our motorcycle. We rode a Calix motorcycle and it felt much better. Having said that, you have to really work on the quality levels of the motorcycle. But the biggest bottleneck that your motorcycle faces is its pricing. The Renegade Classic has been priced at Rs 1.89 lakh, while the Mojave retails for Rs 1.8 lakh. Now this puts it right into the Royal Enfield territory and it has much more aspirational value and also has a better dealership network. So who is the target audience for this motorcycle? Well, if you are looking out for a stylish, comfortable and refined cruiser bike, the Euro motorcycle makes good sense. Having said that, we would have liked to spend more time on the motorcycle and put it through a proper comprehensive road test. We shall be doing the same on the Zigwheels YouTube channel, do keep an eye for that. If you like this video, show your appreciation by hitting the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the Zigwheels YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.